This is the artist painting in our exhibition. It happens to be a depiction of irises along the side of a pond, painted by Monet at his home, Giverny. The irises, of course, are on the right-hand side of this composition, and on the left, we can see the water of the pond itself. The irises have these brilliant pink and purple blossoms, as you can see, all along. But like all of the paintings that involve, that involve floral, uh, floral abundance and water, this one is also somewhat ambiguous in terms of what is it that we are actually looking at. Uh, like the paintings of water lilies, sometimes you don't know whether you're looking at the reflections of the sky in the water or through the water to plants beneath it, whether you're looking at the, uh, the, the plants that are growing up around you, or whether in fact you're looking at the tendrils or the roots of plants that are beneath the surface of the water. So this picture has all of those wonderful visual ambiguities painted with incredible speed and assurance by Monet who was really at the top of his at the top of his game. When you were able to see this picture in person, I think you'll appreciate the fact that the paint is very rich and thickly applied. It gives you a sense of the texture of this very, very dense foliage in this setting that was for Monet. Monet really an earthly paradise. This is another of the paintings by Vincent van Gogh in the exhibition. And as you can see, it is a terracotta pot filled with, filled with flowers. It seems to be sitting on the ground itself because the strokes of blue and green and white and so forth blend together so beautifully indicate this carpet of grass beneath the pot. This is one of the small paintings that Van Gogh actually signed, which he typically didn't, didn't do. But his name is down here in the lower left-hand corner, and he simply put Vincent. These, uh, these paintings are paintings of this kind. He never really expected to sell them. They are painted as private exercises, and so that's why he, generally speaking, didn't, didn't sign them. There really wasn't any need because they weren't going to be on the market. This is a lovely picture from 1888, and it shows his, uh, it shows his technique kind of midway through the rapid evolution that he experienced in the second half of the 1880s. He hasn't reached the full-blown technique that we will see in the next two years, in the next year, until his death in 18. 90, where the brushwork becomes somewhat frenzied and much more, much more active and visceral in a sense. This is still somewhat controlled. The palette is a, is a muted one in the sense that it's a rather narrow range and it consists basically of the greens and blues and grays. But when you have an opportunity to see the painting in person, you'll note that it also contains yellows and little flecks of red that give it visual excitement may not be apparent in images. <laughs> 